flow through a rectangular fin. Just the thing is that I will actually again, you know, give you the basic idea. So QX is the heat coming in uh, to the elemental fin that is being marked with the orange. Okay. So, okay, uh, friends, uh, let me just uh, tell you once once again that uh, these uh, this presentation has been made from the book of uh, Mr. R. K. Rajput uh, by Dr. R. Senthil and uh, by C. P. and by Dr. C. P. Kothandaraman. Okay, so let's get into it once again. So, heat flow through rectangular fin. This I have already done several times, but just for uh, heat balance again, you know, to revive the heat balance in your mind. So, uh, the uh, that orange strip that you're seeing is the element and that element has a thickness dx okay and we all know when the solids are in contact with each other so the heat transfer uh, primarily the heat transfer is basically conduction okay so to is the base temperature okay and uh, ta is the ambient temperature okay so the element is at a distance x from the base okay and the element has a thickness of dx okay so uh, as per the heat uh, balance is concerned uh, of the element so qx it is entering into the element and qx plus dx is uh, now i think you must be acquainted with these terms uh, like x x plus dx y y plus dy so qx plus dx is coming out of the element that is having thickness of dx and q convection definitely because this fin is not surrounding with this uh, with the solid it is not being inserted into a solid it is being inserted into a fluid Okay, so fluid flows and there will be H, the convective coefficient will be H and definitely and if, the, uh, and if it is exposed to any of the fluid and if the temperature is lower than the solid surface, which in this case is yes, then definitely there will be heat loss due to convection. Okay, so uh, there it is and there will be an intrinsic property and that is the K and we all know the unit is watts per meter Kelvin, it's an intrinsic property. Okay, the insulator has got a very low K and the metal has got the highest K. Okay, so this is all about uh, the length is L, the breadth is Y and uh, sorry, the breadth is B and the thickness is Y, the perimeter is actually 2 into B plus Y. Okay, so uh, see uh, this derivation I am not doing, the only thing is that, uh, see uh, this is the Fourier's law that you have applied, Fourier's law here, this is the Newton's law here and the energy balance you know that. Uh, uh, from my previous slide, I uh, uh, means from my previous slide as well and from my previous videos as well that the energy that is coming in will be on one side and the energy that is going out will be on the other side. So it is Qx is equals to Qx plus dx plus Q convection, okay. So finally you are into this relation, okay. Now further it is simplified and we all know that the M is basically what? M is actually the fin parameter, okay, and this is the second order general. Uh, this is the uh, general equation for the second order differential equation, okay. Now, uh, uh, in my previous video, I have touched this one. Now, I will be touching this one. So, this is my topic for today's video. I will be deriving this now, the heat transfer, when the fin tip is insulated, the heat transfer has to take place across an insulated end and then I will be doing 3 to 4 numericals as the time permits. Okay, so let's go like this. So the heat dissipation from a fin at an insulated tip. So heat dissipation from a fin at an insulated end here. See, this is an insulated end. Insulated end means the temperature gradient will actually halt. Okay, the so temperature gradient means when the temperature starts dropping down and when the X starts increasing, suddenly, suddenly what will happen? At some distance x, the temperature won't be able to cross, means the temperature won't be able to drop down further. Just because the end is insulated and we all know the thermal conductivity of insulation is the least, okay, so there won't be any heat transfer. So when there is no heat transfer, theoretically when there is no heat transfer, so there won't be any, you know, uh, delta T. So when there is theoretically no delta T, so the temperature gradient has to uh, come down to zero. So this is the diagram that is depicting that theory. Okay, so the boundary conditions at x is equal to 0, this was there in my previous slide as well, means in my previous video as well when I was doing the derivation for an infinitely long fin because at x is equal to 0, it will be the base temperature, so it is theta is equal to theta 0, at x is equal to L, please uh, don't get confused with the theta, theta is actually T minus TA, okay, that's the thing. Now, and at x is equals to L, we all know that this eventually comes to hall. So, dt by dx is equals to 0. So, applying these boundary conditions to equation, to equation what? Applying these boundary conditions to the equation this. 
the general solution of the second order differential equation. So once you do it, so uh, what do you get? You actually get, uh, you, you try to solve it like this, okay? It's just a simple mathematical thing, okay? Now, C2 is equal to theta, theta minus C1, just, just with the simple thing. So what is C1? C1, you get this, that is theta naught into e to the power minus ml by e to the power ml plus e to the power minus ml, okay? And C2 is this, that is theta naught e to the power ml by e to the power ml plus e to the power minus ml, okay? So you need to substitute the values of C1 and C2 into that particular uh, derivation, right? Uh, means uh, into the particular formula, which was these, uh, the general solution of the second order differential equation, okay? So once you insert that, you are into this, okay? Then you just, you know, you try to rearrange it. Now, what, do you, what is the thing? See, it is e to the power. See, uh, one thing you, you might be remembering from your class nine days or uh, class ninth days or maybe class 10th days, uh, it is like, you know, uh, cos h x, okay? So, it was cos h x. So, it was actually e to the power, e to the power x plus e to the power minus x by 2, okay? So, cos h x is e to the power x plus e to the power minus x by 2, okay? So, suppose if we put it like this, if we actually put it like cos, cos h m l, then it would be e to the power, e to the power m l plus e to the power minus m l, I am just putting into this format, right, by 2. If you have to write like cos h m l minus x, so it will be e to the power m l minus x plus e to the power minus m l minus x by 2, okay? So I am just, you know, following this format to prepare this and now it will be like cos h m l minus x by cos h m l. So if it is, uh, and if it is like this, e to the power m l minus x plus e to the power minus m l minus x by 2 and then e to the power ml plus e to the power minus ml by 2. So, 2, uh, you know, will be nullified. So, what's remaining? This, okay. So, it will be, the, the top part will be cos h ml minus x, okay. And the bottom part will be cos h ml, okay. So, here it is. So, you just put the value of x, you just put the value of x and you will get the temperature here. This is that isolated temperature which, uh, which, is, which is having a function of distance, right? So, this is the temperature profile here. There, it was a bit different in the first uh, type when uh, the, the length was infinite, the temperature profile was different. So, two things you need to derive. The first is the temperature profile, whatever be the condition. So, first of all, you need to derive the temperature profile and then you need to derive the, the temperature, uh, 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 the heat transfer. Here as well, uh, here also we are doing the same thing. First, we are deriving the temperature profile and then we are talking about the heat transfer. So, we have derived the temperature profile. It's a bit peculiar, but uh, actually you all know because you have done this, I think in the engineering mathematics or maybe in class 9th or 10th, okay, when, uh, when we all were doing the, uh, you know, the trigonometric, the logarithmic or the hyperbolic functions, okay? So, the rate of heat flow from a fin which is having a definite length, okay, or a definite length and that to the end is insulated, okay? The rate of heat flow from the fin is given by, you know, this is the Fourier's law, okay? So, just do like that, at a, a little arrangement, okay? You know, when you put this under derivation, so it will be minus of sine, so sin m l x uh, l minus x and this is the minus m okay so it has to be like that and just by the little list and we all know that the maximum conduction occurs at the base so dt by dx is at x is equal to 0 so you get this so this is the final and if we talk about the fin uh, having infinite length it was q fin i'm just you know comparing hpka this is common here and it is theta naught 
and here it is Qfin when insulated. So it is root over HPKA theta naught tan HML. Okay. So and we can also you know go for like uh, theta is equals to theta naught e to the power minus mx. This was there for the uh, for the in, uh, for the uh, infinite length, and here it is theta is equals to theta naught. Okay, cos h m l minus x divided by cos h m l. Okay, 